July the 4th is Independence Day in the US. And it's a public holiday. So in this video, we'll look at what Americans are celebrating and how they celebrate it. They're celebrating leaving Great Britain. Right. <laughs> so in this video, you'll hear our different opinions about the history. And we'll show you how we like to celebrate the holiday today. This is going to be our very personal take on history. Vicky's British and I'm American, so we'll probably disagree. Back in 1776, there was no United States, but down the East Coast, there were 13 British colonies. Now, on July 4th, 1776, the 13 colonies declared independence from Great Britain and came together to become a new country. So basically, they committed treason. <laughs> treason is the crime where you're disloyal to your country or its government. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinion of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impelled them to the separation. So the Declaration of Independence was basically a divorce document. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so why did you want a divorce from us? Well, you were making us pay taxes when we didn't have any representatives in the British Parliament. We had taxation with no representation. Okay, here's the thing. You didn't stay in the colonies. You kept moving west and claiming more land land where Native Americans were living, and land the French said they owned. You caused a war. She means the French and Indian War. It happened earlier. Yeah, and we helped you win it. <laughs> and it cost money. And the British taxpayers had to pay for it. And when we said, hey Americans, can you contribute too? You said, no, we're not paying taxes. Well, you didn't fight the war for us. You were just interested in trade and making money. <laughs> so the one key phrase to remember about this is taxation without representation. And that was the cry going forward. <laughs> <laughs> they had a lot of cries going forward. A cry going forward is like a battle cry. It's a phrase that a group of people use to encourage one another when they're working and fighting together. I mean, I think they had quite a lot to complain about because you had Great Britain with King George and Lord North was the Prime Minister at the time. And in order to, to administer the colonies, you had to rely on boats, sailing boats. So if you needed a new law or you needed to appoint someone new, then you would have to put a letter on a ship and wait for them to respond and then it would have to come back. So it was a kind of um, inefficient way, I guess, to well, govern. Worse than that, there was a British governor in each of the 13 colonies, not an American. Well, you had a lot of local government though as well. And some of the people that the British governors were appointing were of the colonies. Well, right, they were British loyalists. Well, hang on, that's another thing, isn't it? It wasn't that all Americans felt one way. You were very divided. There, there were a lot of people who wanted to stay connected to Great Britain. And actually, that's what the Declaration of Independence is about. It's a list of complaints about the British government and it's designed to remind Americans what they were fighting for. It had to unite them. So that was the job of the Founding Fathers. You'll hear that phrase a lot, the Founding Fathers. And they're a group of men who included people like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. Um, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. From Philadelphia. 
<laughs> and they set up the government and created the government of the United States. These men knew that what they were doing would be treason in Great Britain. It was really dangerous. They would be killed if the British caught them. The Founding Fathers were very brave and farsighted. Farsighted means they understood what might happen in the future. They thought ahead and planned for it. It was pretty farsighted in the 18th century to say, all men are created equal. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the rest is history. We fought the British until 1781, and we won. Yep. <laughs> Thankfully, those wars are all over. Um, and now, July the 4th is an excuse for a great party. We do have wonderful celebrations. We have parades in every town, every big city. What is a parade? Oh, <laughs> a parade is groups of people who are performing as they march down the street. Sometimes there are high school bands, and there are fire trucks and firemen. And in every town, in every city, uh, there's a big, there's a parade of some kind. Have you ever been in a parade? Oh, yes, I have. Really? I didn't know this. Well, when I was a young boy, I was in the Boy Scouts, and we marched in parades in our city. We marched perfectly. We were terrific marchers. OK. <laughs> and then outside the cities, often there are fairgrounds, aren't there? Oh, right. It's a wonderful time to have amusement rides and, and fun foods that you would eat. Like oh, what? Well, we have funnel cakes. Funnel cakes are basically dough covered by confectioner's sugar. OK. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what else you have. Candy floss? <laughs> she means cotton candy. <laughs> OK. But you would eat that? I certainly would. And what about snow cones? I don't know what they are. Oh, well, snow cones are crushed ice dipped in a flavoured syrup of some kind. So are they sorbets? <laughs> no, not at all. It's just crushed ice dipped in a syrup. <laughs> All right, okay. You have to have cold drinks on July 4th because it's really hot. This is one of our favorites. The trick is to freeze cubes of watermelon. And then you put them in here with some fruit juice and whiz them up. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> you can also make that drink with lime juice and make watermelon margaritas. Oh, delicious. <laughs> so for us in Philadelphia, there's a big parade in the morning and then there's a big party on the parkway. The parkway, the Benjamin Franklin Parkway, runs from City Hall all the way to the Art Museum. It's a very wide boulevard, modeled partly after the Champs-Élysées in Paris. There are lots of street vendors. Vendors are people who sell things. So they might sell food or drinks and other stuff. Basically, it's about a lot of people having a lot of fun. <laughs> There's usually um, some great dancing that's going on. You get a lot of local performers there. And then in the evening, in front of the art museum, they have famous artists performing in concerts. Some of them included uh, Pitbull last year, Nicki Minaj. Yes. Uh, Ed Sheeran, uh, Ariana Grande, and it's all for free. And back in the day, they had people like the Beach Boys and... Um... The Isley Brothers. <laughs> And we've been out there and people are dancing in the streets. Well, we've been dancing in the streets. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but not this year. Because of the coronavirus, the celebrations are happening online. Normally, we have friends around for a party and we cook a lot of food. Yes. The traditional food, I think, is hot dogs. Yes. And hamburgers. You got it. <laughs> And Jay makes lots of hamburgers. You make a big batch. 
A batch is a large amount of food that's produced at one time. What is your secret ingredient? Ah, the secret ingredient, don't tell anybody, okay? The <laughs> secret ingredient is a little teriyaki sauce, a little bit of garlic powder, and a little bit of oregano, or as you would say, oregano. That's right. <laughs> and then I take them up to the roof deck and cook them on the grill. And I make lots of salads, so green salads, tomato salads, coleslaw. And don't forget my favorite. A builder's salad. Builder's salad. What's in a builder's salad? <laughs> we call it a builder's salad. I don't know why. Basically, it's just all the vegetables you can find in your fridge, and you chop them up, and you mix them with mayonnaise, and it's lovely. Except we use vegan mayonnaise with the vegetables, so I can eat it too. But the big, big, big finale of July the 4th is fireworks, Spectacular. right? Spectacular. The art museum's just over there. They have a huge fireworks display and we can see it from here. And this year, unfortunately, there'll be no fireworks. No. But we can have some sparklers. On our deck. Happy July 4th. Happy 4th. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click that button. Subscribe. Subscribe.